So with that, um, we'll get to getting to know our new members and Debbie's offer to go first. Oh, sorry, Rappel. Yes, that's right. Well, as we're doing the Rappel, Debbie, you can start to come up. And um, Luz Maria. Yes, I'm gonna actually, I wanted to ask Debbie, this is one of our speakers, oh, okay. to choose a number from one to 80. 29. 29. Dennis is the winner of this I'm going to introduce our one of our newest members, Debbie Mackey, and I just want to say in September when I was membership chair and I'm preparing her red badge for her induction, I misspelled her name. And so now I've learned how to spell it. So D-E-B-B-I-E-M-A-C-K-I-E. -E -E. Pretty easy, right? She told me that her brother's name is Jimmy I-E, sister Lori I-E, and Vicki with an I-E. So with that, you will never, ever forget how to spell Debbie Mackey's name. <laughs> thank you, Sandy. And thank you, Jody, for being a wonderful mentor. So supportive and welcoming and warm. Thank you. Um, what's that? <laughs> So I originally agreed to give this talk in February 2022, when I was asked by Sandy to move it to January, and then a few days ago, Scott emailed me and said, someone canceled and we do it today. <laughs> so to paraphrase, paraphrase a line from Tough Gun, he had me at no PowerPoint. <laughs> um, so my given name is Debbie Mackey. Although it's changed a few times, I've been Debbie McCafferty, I've been Debbie Mackey Burke, and now I'm back to Debbie Mackey, and I don't intend to change it again. <laughs> uh, I was born in San Jose, California, back when it was all orchards and canneries. Um, big companies like Dole, Del Monte, Contadina gave way to shopping malls, and then Silicon Valley. I have an older brother who went to Vietnam when I went off to UCSB. I have two younger sisters, as Sandy said. One was a special ed teacher, and the other is a, was an Intel executive and did a lot of volunteer work. I couldn't wait to get out of San Jose. So when I had to choose between the University of Santa Clara and live at home, or UCSB and live in the dorms, I chose to go to UCSB. I came to UCSB in 1968, and in 1970, my sophomore year, I had two big events happen in my life. Um, the first was the burning of the Bank of America. I was um, part of the anti-Vietnam um, protest that uh, destroyed the Bank of America with a firebomb and a young man from my hometown was killed by a sniper. Um, I was living in an apartment in Isla Vista when the LA SWAT team was driving up and down the streets um, and flatbed trucks with their assault weapons pointed out, throwing tear gas canisters at anyone out after curfew. Um, so that felt like it went on for weeks, but it was just a matter of a few days. Um, the second big event in 1970 was marrying Bill McCaffrey and moving to Amherst, Massachusetts. Bill earned his PhD in sports medicine and I finished my undergraduate degree in comparative religions. It was wonderful living in Western Mass. You know, I had grown up in California. I had never seen the leaves changing like that and the crocuses popping up through the snow. We went cross country skiing around campus and ice skating on the campus pond. And uh, you know, did things like bake bread and learn to play chess and learn how to knit and everything that we didn't do growing up in California. <laughs> we came back to California when Bill got his first job teaching and coaching water polo at the University of Redlands. We lived up in the mountains at 6,000 feet in a little town called Forest Falls. We bought a house overlooking the San Gregorio Mountains and went cross-country skiing at our back door. I finished a master's degree in psychology, learned a lot of career options. A sailboat in Santa Barbara, and it was pretty much a great life. Everything changed in July of 1980 when after being married for 10 years, I became a widow at age 29. My husband was killed during an armed robbery by a man who was out on parole for armed robbery. 
So he went to prison the rest of his life and I wasn't sure what to do with mine. So I decided to move back to Santa Barbara where I still had a lot of friends and uh, live on our boat in, Santa Bar in the harbor. My first job in Santa Barbara was teaching at Antioch University. Lois Phillips, who was the first director of Antioch Santa Barbara, um, had also lived in Amherst and we became good friends. She hired me to teach one class and then another class. And then over the next five years, Antioch grew and class sizes went from about five or 10 to over 20. <clears throat> um, many of the students that I taught went on to become therapists in the community. So it's so rewarding now to bump into some people and many of them are retired therapists already, but you know, they're so always so appreciative. Um, I started uh, in 1985 working at Santa Barbara City College, where I was given the task of starting the high school outreach program with the goal of improving the image of City College in our community. So I think it worked pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> After a few years, I became, I became a full-time academic counselor, which is how I met Oscar Zavala, who recruited me to be in the Sunrise chapter. It was a delight to work with Oscar for over 25 years as co-chairs and good friends. As academic counselors, we helped um, students to figure out what they needed to do in order to graduate or transfer. Uh, we helped them get out of what we called academic debt. Uh, we helped them maneuver the barriers and the roadblocks on their <clears throat> in <clears throat> that, <clears throat> that got in their way and to change some of the policies and procedures that were not very student oriented. SBCC was an amazing place to work. Uh, the diversity of students kept it very interesting and very challenging. I worked with students who came right off the streets out of prison. I worked with homeless students who ended up graduating and transferring to the university. One of my students who started with basic English and math now has his PhD. So there's some great success stories from City College. Um, I did eventually remarry in 19... Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> In 1987, I married Joe Burke, and our daughter Caitlin was born in 1993. Becoming a mom at age 43 was amazing. It was wonderful, and it's the best thing I ever did. Um, she brought so much joy into our lives. Over the next 20 years, you know, just time flew by. And, uh, you know, raising a kid, helping with my parents, they were sick, they passed away. And although Joe and I um, did get a divorce, um, <coughs> We remain close friends. So it was sad for us um, when he died in 2013. I retired in 2014, and that summer I traveled all over the place. I went to Alaska, North Carolina, Cozumel, Seattle, Orcas Island, Belize. Um, I visited my daughter with, um, while she was in college at Humboldt State, which is so beautiful. I'd never been up to that part of the, the state. And when she studied in Italy. So nowadays, I play pickleball, like everybody else I know. <laughs> I enjoy hiking, swimming, walking the beach, riding my bike, out on the Elwood Bluffs, visiting families and friends. I've been a longtime member of the Live Oak Unitarian Universalist Congregation but in Goleta. But um, when COVID happened, I just wasn't into spending Sunday mornings in front of my computer doing the you know, Zooming. So I decided that I'd rather give my time and my money to local nonprofits. So I, I started contributing to the food bank and direct relief, and I became a member of Los Elitis, which is a subgroup of the National Assistance League. And what we do is provide new clothing for K through 12 students locally that, need, that are in need. And last spring, I participated in Camp Whittier and the cleanup day there, and I was so impressed with the work being done and the friendliness and inclusiveness of all of you. And I decided that I would join. So what, the reason I'm here is because I think you do such good work. And you're, you are so welcoming and so friendly and so much fun <laughs> that I'm looking forward to you know, being more involved and, and participating with all of you. I find you so inspiring. Thank you. Any questions? You still own your boat? No, you know, I, we had a 26 foot folk boat, and then I had a Santana 27. And then when I remarried, we had a Catalina 36, and we sold that and bought a house. 
<laughs> but I love to go sailing. I, I did the, a bigger boat. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> You're gonna need a bigger boat. I did the Transpac race in 1982. Oh, that was fun. Yeah. Where does your daughter live now? She lives on the west side on Sola and Chino, and um, uh, she lives with her boyfriend, who's a wonderful guy, and she works at Olio Limon. She does the books and catering business and stuff. So she has a little office right above Olio Limon. Great. Thank you. Oh, go ahead. Um, I'm a graduate of Santa Barbara City College. Oh, and good. It was an awesome place to go. I couldn't afford to support myself and go to UCSB, so I went there and then went on to Seattle U. I'm curious as to how many people in the room actually attended UCS or, or Santa Barbara City College. Wow. So Why there you go. Results? Good work. <laughs> Can't take full credit. <laughs> it's still a good place. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Next up, um, I don't know what Dave has included in this presentation, so I'm excited to see it, but uh, David Palm. Uh, Just push enter. Oh, I've got some technical difficulties here. Got to wing it. Yeah. So there's three engineers walking into a vehicle. <laughs> there's a mechanical engineer and won't start. He goes, well, it's got to be the fan belt. The electrical engineer says, it's got to be the alternator. And the software engineer says, let's get out of the car and get in again. <laughs> 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 okay. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Jeez, oh, Debbie made it hard to follow. That was uh thank you for sharing. That was nice to get to know you. So I'm David, um, David Palm. Thank you for having me here. It's kind of nervous being up here in front of all you guys, but uh, you know, crowd. I'll do my best. So I want to start, you know, um, early life. I grew up in San Diego. Um, so I want to share some pictures of my family here. So on the right here is, uh, I think, uh, me, I age three, maybe, uh, maybe younger, uh, mom and dad in Yosemite. And uh, so from an early age, I've always loved being outside, uh, adventuring, being, being, with, being a family guy. Um, and then on the left here, you see uh, my family. Um, over at Catalina Island. So my mom and dad are both teachers. Uh, my dad is a computer teacher. My mom is a librarian, but then kind of in the last decade that a profession expired. So she kind of ended up becoming an elementary school teacher in her uh, final teaching days. Um, and my brother works in uh, IT at a biotech company down in San Diego. So we're still pretty close and um, I'll actually get to see him this weekend. I'm going down for an early Thanksgiving. So I kind of lived my first 18 years in San Diego and uh, that kind of brought me until I went to UCSB. That's what brought me to Santa Barbara in the fall of uh, 2006. Um, so there's a picture of me on the left, uh, store tower in the background. Um, I can get to that story in a moment. Um, but UCSB was kind of really where I felt like I came into my own. Um, I started studying earth science and geology when I first got there. I was really into that. And then in the fall of 2008, I decided to study abroad in uh, Lyon, France. So there's me with kind of long, long hair, uh, second to the right on the bottom. And uh, had a great time in Lyon, France. That's uh, technically the gastronomic capital of the world. Uh, the Lyon soccer team was really good back then. And as you see, I didn't really even bring shoes. So like, funny story, I'm just a you know, young kid from San Diego. Like we don't have weather in San Diego. I mean, we do, it's 70, like all 12 months of the year. So I thought it was like that pretty much everywhere in the world. And like, I woke up, you know, one day and it's, you know, late September, getting October, 
And I walk to school down the river like I normally do, off to the university from my uh, host parents' house. On the way back home, it started snowing and I was really cold. So I like ran to the local mall and was like, I need some shoes and maybe a jacket. And uh, I just remember all these French people were laughing at me. I'm just this kid in board shorts and sandals and I had to run to the mall and buy some, buy some new clothes. So still have those to that day, um, it's pretty funny. <laughs> so that kind of brings me to my professional life. So after graduating, um, oh, actually studying abroad actually changed my kind of graduation path. And uh, after doing that, I became really interested in continuing to study the French language and I actually ended up getting my degree in global and international studies. Um, so I really liked that. That was a great uh, change of direction and uh, kind of allowed me to still be passionate about earth science uh, without fully getting a degree in it. Um, yeah, so in my professional life, um, you know, growing up around computers and having a dad who was a uh, work, worked with computers, I felt really comfortable doing that. So I applied to the Apple store and I became an Apple genius. One of those guys who worked behind the bars, wore that little blue shirt for about four years. And that was pretty fun. I actually really liked that. It was a really engaging environment. People from all over the world came to the Apple store. We had celebrities come into the store, you know, like even celebrities drop their phones in toilets, you know, and, you know, sports athletes. And it was really funny. Like, actually, I'm a big sports fan and uh, I'm into the San Diego Chargers, who now play in Los Angeles. So don't get me started. <laughs> but I worked in there in San Diego and Philip Rivers came into the store and he was the quarterback at the time. He's got like seven daughters. It's kind of crazy. And so they all march in and I see him immediately. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So my boss goes, can you help him? And I go, absolutely. So I'm sorry, whoever I was helping. I still feel bad for that day. I, I'm unavailable now. So I go help Philip Rivers and like. I just remember this guy gets paid like $20 million a year. And he was mad that he had to pay a hundred dollars because his daughter dropped her iPod. It was like, these rich people are crazy. So I just really enjoyed that. And that was just, that was a really good, fit me very well. You know, I like talking to people. I like, I like just kind of just enjoying, just enjoying life. Um, so then in 2014, his education abroad office, it brought me back to Santa Barbara, and that was about the only good thing it did. Um, <laughs> I didn't really like that job. It kind of locked me up in an office, and, uh, but I learned, you know, a lot about myself. I learned that I enjoy working as part of a team. Um, I love being in Santa Barbara, um, and I really do care about uh, education abroad. Um, so that's something that I learned. So for four years, I helped students uh, be able to participate in educational abroad experiences. Um, and so that was really valuable. Um, and so if you guys have ever done that, I'd love to talk to you about it because that was really impactful in my life. And then and for the last three years, I've worked at Yardy Systems. So I know some other you have worked there, some of you uh, family who worked there, and that's a great place. And so uh, I went back and did some schooling to get some more kind of formal computer programming training. So I did that through UCSB Extension, and then I got this job at Yardi, and I've been uh, happily working there since uh, 2018. So it's kind of my professional life. And then personal life, you know, um, I am a Christian. Um, so that's kind of been something that's defined, you know, my life and my experiences um, growing up. Um, in high school, I was part of this professional development and leadership program called the Aaron Price Fellows Program. And that's something that's kind of given me some experience to join, you know, a club like Rotary. So with that, it was kind of a group where four different high schools were kind of selected, had about 10, 12 members. So some were from more yeah, urban many, districts, many, some were from more suburban districts. And we kind of met together to learn more about the environment. Now, I the would like to um, learn about each other from my um, primary. So that was a really good experience. The, um, the new endocrinologist in the Montessori. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, <lead> over here. <laughs> so that was really cool. So I enjoyed um, kind of being part of this Aaron Price Fellows program. And that kind of led me to 
some of the experiences and kind of participate in something <laughs> like Rotary and kind of give me the gusto to actually join because yeah, I'm kind of young and you guys are all very developed <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Yeah. Um, not sure if I'm going to be invited back after this, so you know, got to make it count. Um, so some of my favorite activities, you know, are traveling, hiking. I think like Debbie, biking. I like disc golf. Um, you know, um, so here's some pictures. Uh, I went skydiving uh, over at Lompoc. Um, my grandma, she's 101, so I got great genes. So uh, I'm hoping to hit like at least 88, you know. Um, <laughs> so I can be a Rotarian for a long time, you know. That's my goal here. Um, and of course, I'm dating the wonderful President Hannah, you know. So she's the one who connected me, you know, to the Santa Barbara Sunrise group, you know, and that's kind of how I got connected. And uh, after kind of meeting you guys and coming to some events, you know, like coming to Camp Whittier Service Day and getting to know people and, you know, actually learning what you guys are doing here and, you know, now what we're doing here. I'm proud to be a member and, uh, you know, I, I want to continue doing great work with you guys and with the club and with the organization. So I just have a few other pictures of me and Hannah here that I'll, I'll leave you with. Um, so here's one of us, the first time Hannah brought me to the Eastern Sierras uh, at this place called Convict Lake. It's now one of my favorite places to go. None of these are too embarrassing. <laughs> Hannah makes us wear these Easter ears every, every Easter. Year. So we're three for three now, rocking those. <laughs> Well, there's us over in uh, San Francisco in front of the Golden Gate Bridge. And uh, yeah, here's uh, one of us at Yosemite. So for, from an early age to, uh, to now, you Full know, circle. still hanging out in Yosemite Valley. So I just want to say thank you guys and uh, you made me feel very welcome. <laughs> Yeah, questions. Uh, no, just a statement. Did, did you know that uh, Anant Yardi used to be a member of this club? Yeah, and I think I should email him and tell him to pay my membership fees. <laughs> <laughs> HR has been a little not committal about that. He, he suggested that we give up breakfast uh, uh, and uh, donate the money to uh, a good cause, and everybody just bring a banana for breakfast. <laughs> He's kind of a thin guy. I don't know. Yeah. There she is. Got it. Uh, as a developed individual. Yes, sir. I don't understand the newfangled terminology of global studies. Can you kind of explain what that encompasses as far as yeah. education? Yeah. Um, I would say it's kind of interdisciplinary, which was kind of cool. Um, so we took some courses. In the environmental studies, we had a core curriculum that kind of studied, you know, the political spectrum of kind of what's going on in, in a geopolitical space. So these core classes, we everyone in the major took, and then you could fill those in. I took some religious studies courses. I took some, you know, I was interested in the earth and environmental studies courses. So you could piece together some different. Um, classes from different disciplines, which I liked because I found when, say, you only look from a sociological discipline, it's very narrow and they have a very specific way of looking at the world. And I kind of open-minded, so I like looking at it from a sociological perspective, but also a political science perspective and also an environmental perspective and honestly also from an economical perspective. So we kind of encompassed and took a little bit of all of those together. So I would say mostly aligned with a political science degree. It's more traditional. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Diane? Where did you meet Lovely? Oh, great question. So I didn't have that, but we uh, both used to be runners. Now neither of us run anymore. And we met in a running club. So yeah, that was, that's how we met. I want to know what age people become developed. <laughs> Whoa. I'll let you know when I, when I figure that out myself. Hopefully soon. <laughs>
לא תגיד פרס, אם זה חיים 36. Both David and Debbie, we're so happy you're both in the club. Very exciting. And um, to honor both of you, your names will be put into 30 dictionaries that go to third graders. So with that.